this lecture we'll talk about groups and teams or groups and teams getting organized as groups regardless of how they are organized most the most essential work in business occurs in individual work groups these are groups and teams so we'll take a closer look at them although some experts do not make a distinction between groups and teams in recent years, there's been a gradual shift towards an emphasis on teams and managing them to enhance individual organizational success. Traditionally, a group has been divided, has been defined as two or more individuals who communicate with one another, share a common identity, and have a common goal. A team is a small group whose members have complementary skills, have a common purpose, goals, and approach, and hold themselves mutually accountable. All teams are groups, but not all groups are teams. A type of group, uh, the, the type of groups to, that an organization establishes depends upon the tasks it needs to accomplish in the situation it faces. Some specific kinds of groups and teams include committees, task forces, project teams, product development teams, quality assurance teams, and self-directed work teams. All of these can be virtual or they could be on site virtual teams in virtual teams employees from different locations rely on email audio conferencing video conferencing faxes internet or other technological tools to accomplish their goals virtual teams are becoming a part of everyday business and the number of employees working remotely from their employer increases more than 80 percent and has increased more than 80 percent over the last several years this table shows some of the differences between groups and teams and how to think about them. Um, for example, uh, groups tend to have a strong leader, can have a strong leader, individual accountability. Um, a team sometimes shares leadership roles because depending upon what the particular task is, the expert or the specialist can work in those general areas. Um, there are different examples of how working groups and teams um, might operate separately or differently. Um, sometimes work groups, for example, have efficient meetings or they, they run efficient meetings with an agenda and a time frame and all this pulling things together. But, sometimes, but a team might have more open-ended discussion, active problem solving, many different perspectives coming together uh, in real time to solve a uh, an emerging problem, if you will. So see, here, here are some examples. Organizations can make use of specialized groups, uh, two of which are presented on this slide, committees and task forces. A committee is usually a permanent formal group that does some specific task. For example, many firms have a compensation or finance committee to examine the effectiveness of these areas of operations, as well as the need for possible changes. A task force is a temporary group. So a committee is a standing group. Task force is a temporary group of individuals who are responsible for bringing about a particular change. They typically come from multiple departments and various levels of the organization. Task force membership is usually based upon expertise rather than organizational position. That is somebody that knows the problem, knows how potential solutions, that sort of thing, regardless of their level. Occasionally, a task force may be formed from individuals outside the company, or individuals outside the company may, be, may come in to be part of a task force on a team. For example, a consultant or a specialist in some particular area. For example, um, in cybersecurity, one might bring in an outside expert on that task force. In the United States, the use of teams in organizations is fairly widespread. They're typically formed because they have been found to increase productivity, quality, and competitiveness. Teams are beneficial because they pull the members' knowledge and skills, and they can make greater use of them than individuals working alone. It's important to point out that effective teams are usually small in number, no more than five members. Organizations employ different types of teams depending upon what they wish to accomplish. The more common types of teams are listed on this, on this slide and the following slide, and we'll talk about them a little bit. 
project teams and product development teams, quality assurance teams. Uh, they're also called quality circles. And the highest form of team functioning, uh, which is the self-directed work teams, recurred, re referred to as the SDWT. You can see here on this slide we have project teams. They're groups that are similar to task forces, which normally run their operations and have control over a specific work project. Their project teams aren't necessarily task forces. They might be part of normal business operation, and you set up a product te or project team when you're implementing a product or a marketing plan or something like that, whereas a task force is usually addressing a problem that is a one-time event. Product development teams are a specific type of project team that's formed to devise, design, and implement a new product. We also have quality assurance teams or quality circles. These are small groups of workers brought together from throughout the organization to solve specific quality problems or productivity issues or perhaps a customer service or some other service problem. Essentially, the team works as peers to try and identify quality issues and then move forward with solutions. Self-directed work teams are groups of employees responsible for a work process end-to-end -end or some segment of the business that delivers a product to an external or an, inter an internal customer or an external customer. Uh, they're, they're often sometimes called leaderless teams or the leader is outside the teams, but their idea is to identify the objectives and work towards those objectives as a team. These are some of the important uh, directions that uh, teams and organizations are going. And interestingly enough, many times meetings are used as reasons for progress. Don't know what to do, so you call a meeting. How is your project going? Well, we had three meetings. Uh, most people, or many, uh, this, this says 28% people feel that 28% of meetings are a waste of time, more than a quarter of them that people feel like really don't get you anywhere. And it's sometimes because people just feel like that's what progress is. Meetings are a means to an end, not an end in itself. Uh, small teams work on research and engineering projects in companies like Google and the like, and those kind of projects might last uh, six to 12 months. So that's the uh, discussion about teams and meetings. Be comfortable in teams. That's how things move forward.